Now. Hello and Assalamu Alaikum everyone. A very warm welcome to the Strategic Business Leader Orientation Session for September 2022 online classes. I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran. Now, this is a very important session today uh, as it will help you understand the syllabus and the course which is uploaded on the portal. So when you are going over the lectures on the portal, uh, you are uh, you have ease of using them for your success in the upcoming exams. Now, first of all, my tutor profile before I proceed further with the orientation for SPL. Uh, in terms of my qualification, uh, I am a fellow chartered certified accountant. I have a certificate in international auditing and a CA finalist from the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan. In terms of my experience it's been 15 years since i am teaching the acca qualification and my core specialization lies in the double a paper the triple a paper and the sbl paper i am teaching the sbl paper since acca started the sbl paper way back in september 2018 i'm also a registered mentor for oxford brooks university research analysis project in terms of my past rates uh, since I have started teaching the SPL paper uh, from September 2018, when this paper started in, my passing rates have been above the global averages. In terms of my affiliations, uh, I head the online lecturing platform, which is the Online Lecturers Academy. Uh, I'm also associated with PAC, which is a gold approved learning provider of ACCA in Lahore, Pakistan. And I'm also connected with Zivit College in India. So that's my profile. Now let's start on with the orientation session and let's see all what you need to know about SPL and the course which you have enrolled in for. This is my social media presence uh, for all of you to know and how you can connect with me as a tutor. Uh, I have a dedicated SPL Facebook page, uh, which you can see it right in front, which is SPL by KK. So you can explore this Facebook page to be updated about any development, any news, any updates about SPL. You can follow me on the Instagram, which is kashif.kamran. You can follow me on the LinkedIn, which is kashif-kamran. You can follow me on the YouTube channel, and that's very, very beneficial because I keep uploading lots of informa informative sessions about AA, AAA, and SPL on my YouTube channel. So it can be very beneficial for all of you. So that's youtube.com slash Kashif Kamran. You can follow me on my website, which is kashifkamran.com. Uh, and that's another opportunity for all of you to keep updated. You can follow me on my, uh, you can email me uh, your assignments, uh, anything you want me to check uh, at splkashifkamran at gmail.com. So you can send me as many assignments you want to submit for review and for my personal feedback at splkashifkamran at the rate gmail.com and my WhatsApp number. I hope you've all registered with me. So you must be pretty familiar with my WhatsApp number. And you can also get hold of that number from the WhatsApp group. So that's my social media presence. Now, moving on from the social media presence and my tutor profile, Let's start the paper investigation, SPL, September 22. Now, when you have enrolled yourself for SBL paper, you must be familiar with the paper and you must be familiar with the expectation of the examining team. And that's the only way you can pass the SPL paper. So let's start with a quick overview of the paper itself. Now, when you look at the knowledge inputs you need for SPL, because SPL is the first strategic essential paper right after F4, F5, F6, F7, F8, and F9. So the knowledge input will come from all the preceding papers. Now, when you're sitting for the SPL exam, because SPL is a very journal theoretical paper, and I'll come back to that journal theoretical paper shortly, but this is the knowledge input you need for this paper. A lot of knowledge will come from the F1 paper, the AB paper, the F4 paper, the law paper, the F5 paper, the PM paper, the F7 paper, the FR paper, the F8 paper, the AA paper, and the F9 paper, the FM paper. You have diversified knowledge inside SPL. There are lots of topics which comes from 
F1, F4, F5, F7, F8, and F9. Now, that's where the SBL paper is. Right after the F9 paper, you have the SBL paper. So the examining team is expecting your carry forward knowledge from F1 to F9 uh, into the SPL paper. So uh, a lot of diversified knowledge, a lot of knowledge you must have covered in your preceding ACC exams will benefit you in the SPL paper. Now let's go further down and let's see what sort of a syllabus is there for SPL. Now, when you look at the SPL, syllabus and you know this course is being taught by myself Kashif Kamran and my colleague Mr. Hussein Kazi and there are eight syllabus areas and this is how the eight syllabus areas have been allocated between myself and my colleague Hussein Kazi. Syllabus area A, B, C, D, syllabus area E, F, G, H. Now these are eight syllabus areas. Now, when you look at these eight syllabus areas from A to H, this is how they are bifurcated between myself and my colleague, Mr. Hussain Kazi. Syllabus area A is about leadership, and this is the syllabus area which I am taking. Uh, KK is my initial, right? Kashif Kamran. Syllabus area B is governance. Again, that's, our, that's my responsibility, KK. Syllabus area C is strategy. Again, that is my responsibility, KK. Syllabus area D is risk. Again, that is my responsibility, KK. Syllabus area E, technology and data analytics. That is the responsibility of Hussein Kazi, my colleague. Syllabus area F, organizational control and audit. That is my responsibility, KK. Then syllabus area G, finance and planning and decision making is the responsibility of Mr. Hussein Kazi. And syllabus area H, Enabling success and change management is another area of responsibility for Hussein Kasi. So there are three syllabus areas which Mr. Hussein Kasi is looking after. Hussein Kasi is looking after the syllabus area E, G, and H. So if you have any queries pertaining to syllabus area E, G, H, you will not drop me a WhatsApp message. Rather, you will drop Mr. Hussein Kasi a message asking him uh, your query. So if any issues are within the syllabus area E, G, and H, you will be corresponding with Mr. Hussain Kasi. But if you have any problems uh, from syllabus area A, syllabus area B, syllabus area C, syllabus area D, and syllabus area F, you will be corresponding with me, KK, Kashif Kamra. So I'm looking at a broader syllabus or the more in-depthful syllabus here. Now, in terms of my syllabus areas, particularly uh, the area of strategy and risk, which is this, right? This is the star areas. These are the core areas. Uh, when you come to the lectures of strategy and when you come to the lectures of risk, uh, you need to be very careful because from an examination point of view, a lot of question comes from the syllabus area strategy. And a lot of question comes from the syllabus area risk. Uh, risk has been a very regular feature of the past exam papers. So you have to be very watchful of risk. And risk is a very repetitive area in almost every single exam setting. You do get a question on risk. Uh, if there are five exam settings, out, out of five exam settings, you will find risk in four exam settings. It's quite a repetitive syllabus area, and you have to be very good on that. And it's a pretty simple risk, uh, uh, syllabus area, not a difficult one. So in terms of my syllabus areas, five, the more important one is C and D. In terms of repetition, in terms of frequency, every syllabus area is important because you never know which syllabus area will be tested more in the upcoming exams. But on the basis of the prior practices, syllabus area C and D are the more important ones. So that's the syllabus, eight syllabus areas, uh, and the distribution of these eight syllabus areas among the tutors. Now, moving on from that syllabus and distribution of the syllabus among tutors, and you can also see from the syllabus areas how diversified the syllabus is. You have aspects of governance, you have aspects of leadership, you have aspects of technology, 
You have aspects of finance. That's a bit of F7 and F9 paper. You have strategy. You have controls, F8 paper, organizational control. So you have a lot of diversified knowledge, which is coming from, again, the F1 paper, the F4 paper, the F7, F9, F8. So you can see the diversity of knowledge right among the syllabus areas here. Now, moving on and looking at the paper format, a pretty simple looking paper format. Strategic business leader is a case study exam. And that's the focal point is a case study exam. So whenever we look at a case study exam, rote learning is zero. There is no space of rote learning something. There is no space of learning something. Application, application. You have knowledge. You will never pass the SPL paper till the time you know how to apply knowledge, how to translate knowledge according to the case study or how to adapt your knowledge or how to change your knowledge or how to modify your knowledge in the context of the case study. Who will be successful? Who will be successful? A student who is capable of modifying, changing, adapting the knowledge according to the situation given in the case study. But if you are a very rigid student, you just uh, directly uh, apply, you just directly quote the knowledge in the exam answer is useless. You need not to quote the direct knowledge, right? You need to apply the knowledge. You need to translate the knowledge into the case study. Now, you will learn that once you go over the course and particularly when you go over the webinars and you go over the practice sessions because the practice sessions will guide you how to write an answer. But it's a case study exam, right? And when you look at a case study exam and you're writing an answer in a case study exam, this answer has to sync. The answer has to sync with case. If your answer is not sync with case and you're writing a very generic answer, you will fail. You cannot write a generic answer. You cannot just uh, learn a model, learn a theory, and you say, okay, I will just put the model and the theory as it is in the SPL paper. No. It's, it's a too immature approach for the SPL paper. And you will learn that. You will learn the examples of that once you start getting into the course, which is available on the portal. But it's a case study exam of four hours one hour extra, four hours, including the reading and planning time and the reflection time, which can be used flexibly within the examination. So it's a four hour exam, right? And within that four hours, you have the reading time, you have the planning time, and you have the reflection time. Reflection time means the writing time. So within four hours, you have to do everything and you have one case study of 100 marks. So one case study, 100 marks, and four hours. You will learn how to go down with it in the practice sessions, in the webinars, which I will be sharing with you shortly. Now, moving ahead, strategic business leader is an exam based on one main business scenario, which involve candidates completing several tasks. So you will have one scenario, Suppose a scenario is about ABC company. So you will have one scenario about ABC company and examiner will tell you everything about ABC company. Uh, the operations of ABC company, the competitors of ABC company, the business environment of ABC company, the risk of ABC company, uh, the strategies of ABC company, the governance of ABC company, everything about ABC company on like 10 to 12 pages, 10 to 12 pages of reading. Exhibits, exhibit one, exhibit two, exhibit three, exhibit four, exhibit five, exhibit six. There are many exhibits which contains information about the company. And you read that. And after reading that, there will be several requirements which are known as task. Task requirements. So you have to read the task and every task will tell you what you have to do. So when you go into the course on the portal and you start the course on the portal 
And particularly when you go to the webinars and the practice sessions available on the portal, you will get to know how to read a case, how to solve a case, how to read a requirement, how to understand a requirement. So everything is available on the portal. So nothing to worry about. But it's one main business scenario. So it's one long case study about one organization having several tasks, accumulative, the total number of marks are 100. So that how, that's how the paper looks like. So it's one case study with one organization having several tasks, several requirements, and you have four hours to do everything. So that's how the paper looks like. All questions are compulsory and each examination will contain of 80 technical marks and 20 professional marks. Now, technical marks is something you know from your F1 paper, F2 paper, F3 paper, F4, F5, F6, F7, F8, F9. You know the technical marks. That is basically the requirements. That is basically what the examiner is asking you and you have to give the answer to that. You're very familiar with the technical marks because that's in every ACCA paper. But professional marks is something which you need to extract, understand, and get clarity from the syllabus available on the portal. So once you start the syllabus, once you go into the syllabus, once you go over the syllabus area, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and particularly when you come to the practice lectures, when you come to the webinars, you will understand what exactly 20 professional marks are and what is expected from you in terms of the 20 professional marks. How will you gain them? Because I will just be sharing with all of you uh, the, the, the mechanism of grabbing the 20 professional marks. So 20 professional marks is how you implement them in your answer or how you tone your answer and how you ensure that the 20 professional marks are part and parcel of the answer you are writing for the examiner. But what extra you have to do for 20 professional marks, what you have to demonstrate, what you have to show to the examiner to get these 20 professional marks, that is all given in the syllabus. But the important thing that you all have to work on is 20 professional marks. So you have to be very watchful of the 20 professional marks. And I will be giving you the source from where you will be grabbing knowledge in my syllabus about 20 professional marks. So don't worry about it. So I will be giving you appropriate sources in the orientation session today from where you will get, where you will get the understanding about 20 professional marks. Now the paper format and the key aspects to focus on. What are key aspects of this paper? Number one, four hours. How to go about utilizing four hours in an effective manner? Number one, because you have so much time. What will you do in this so much time? How would you break this time between reading and planning and between writing the answer? Number two, one scenario means a lot of reading and retention. How will you read so much? How will you retain so much? That's, that's an other challenge of this paper. First of all, four hours, then a lot of reading. And a lot of reading means a lot of retention. And the students are very bad on retaining something. Next, 80 technical marks. Uh, that's simple because we all know that. But 20 professional marks, that's important because expecting to pass SPL scoring zero professional marks is difficult. I normally tell my students that out of the 20 professional marks, you should aim at getting 15, 15 out of 20. If you want to pass SPL paper, aim at 15, aim at 15 out of 20. Then only you can pass the SPL paper. But if you say, okay, I'll, I'll score 50 marks out of 80 technical marks. And I'll score zero out of the 20 professional marks. And you expect this formula will help you pass the SPL paper. That is never. That is never. So I believe some of the key things in the paper is four hours. That is one extra hour. Then the second important thing in this paper is a lot of reading and retention. And the third important thing in this paper is 
20 professional marks. So you have to pen them, pen them down somewhere. Three important things from this paper. And these three important things, you need to be very watchful over the entire syllabus you will be covering. Now, this is how four hours should look like as per ACCA guidance. ACCA believe that when you have four hours, four hours means 240 minutes. So ACCA believe that the area in blue, the area in blue is the writing time as per ACCA. And the area in red is the reading time. Now, one hour on average maximum is the reading and planning time. Some students do take 40 minutes in reading and planning. But I think mostly the average student takes one hour in reading and planning. But I, I believe you should keep one hour because that's a better rule of thumb. So from 240 minutes, you need to deduct 60 minutes for reading and planning. So the net time you have to write the answer is 180 minutes. 180 minutes is three hours, right? And you're very familiar writing uh, the paper, uh, 100 marks paper in three hours. So that's nothing unusual. So you have an extra one hour and the investment of that one hour is critical for your success. What you do in one hour, how you go about utilizing the one hour, how you read in one hour, how you plan in one hour, that investment will give you the return and the return is success. But if your investment in the first one hour is very casual, you are lost, you don't know what to do, how to do, you have spoiled your one hour. And after one hour, when you have three hours to write the answer, you don't know what to do. What's, what's the benefit of one hour? Nothing. But when you enter the last three hours, 180 minutes, and you have spent 60 minutes with such good quality that you exactly know after 60 minutes what to do, how to do, you are, you are the best student to get success in the SPL paper. So your utilization of the first one hour is critical success factor. This this is the critical success factor. So how you read, how you plan, how you retain. And I've covered them in my webinars. I've gone deeply inside the 60 minutes in my webinars. I've guided students about reading and planning in my webinars. And you have to watch them if you want to be good on taking command of the SPL paper. And I do webinars on a quarterly basis, right? I've done webinar for December 21. I've done webinars for June 22. And I will be doing it for your exam sitting in September, for September 22, somewhere in the mid of August. So you have to benefit from those webinars. Now, coming down to the professional marks, I, I hope you're all clear with the time break, 60 minutes and 180 minutes. So 60 minutes is the reading and planning time. But what you do in the reading and planning time, you need to watch my webinars. I will be guiding you about that shortly. And what you exactly do in the 180 minutes, Again, the guidance will come from the webinars and I will just be recommending you the webinars to watch. Okay, moving onwards. Professional marks, something very critical in the SPL paper because you cannot expect to score zero out of 20. If you expect to score zero out of 20 and then even pass the SPL paper, this formula is the most illogical formula for me as a tutor. I, I normally tell my student, aim at 15 out of 20 marks when you're looking at the professional marks in the SPL paper. Now, my December 21 webinar and my June 22 webinar, which is available, and they are total of 24 hours, will change the way you look and understand professional marks. Now, first of all, I believe you have to cover the syllabus. I think there was a student, Muhammad Hazib, asking me, I, I don't understand how to write an answer. It's too early. It's too early. You first need to cover the syllabus, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Then when you come to the webinars, the 24 hours of webinar already available, you sit down and you watch the webinars. The webinars will open your mindset, how to write an answer, how to read, how to plan, how to write. What is the marking scheme? What is the marking scheme? 
how to get the professional marks what is the definition of a professional mark what is the breakup of the professional marks what to do what to do to get 15 out of 20 professional marks 24 hours of webinars are there to help you moreover moreover these webinars are available on my youtube channel and i'll be sharing link of that with you shortly but on the portal on the portal where you have the course there is a practice and exam drilling session on the portal i'll just show you that on the portal right not on the youtube on the portal there is an exam drilling session which is a total of 17 hours which will give you further understanding of professional marks. So 24 hours on the YouTube YT and 17 hours on the portal practice sessions. Imagine how much is that? 41 hours? 41 hours. And Muhammad Haseeb, have you watched these 41 hours? So how would you know how to write an answer? So it's too early, Muhammad Asib. I think you must have started course uh, seven days ago, 14 days ago. And in seven and 14 days, how can you excel in writing an answer? It's, it's too early, right? I, I think you're going at a very super speed. I, I hope you're clear with that, Muhammad Asib, right? So how many hours of webinars? 24 hours of webinar. And how many hours of exam drilling sessions? 17. Where are the exam drilling sessions, everyone? Where are the exam drilling sessions? On the portal. And where are the webinars? On the YouTube. But when will you watch them? When will you watch them? After you complete the entire syllabus. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And the early you complete the syllabus, the better for you. Because you need to spend more time on practice. You need to spend more time on practice. I'll just be making a timetable for you when you should complete the syllabus and when you should start the practice for all of you, right? I hope you're all clear with me. Is everyone clear with the webinars and practice sessions? Uh, I'll be guiding you uh, from where you can access them and I will be guiding you about how much time you should be spending on them and when. Okay, great. Moving on. Course on the portal. Now that's important. And then I'll give you the links of the webinars and the practice sessions, right? Course on the portal. Yes, I'm coming to that, Majid. Just give me five minutes. Course on portal. Now, when you go to the portal, I hope you've seen the portal, right? Just let me show you that for a minute because I need to guide you something very, very realistically. Okay, can you see uh, the portal in front of you, all of you? Can you see my courses? This is my login, right, as a tutor. Can, can you all see this screen in front of you? Right, so I, I'll just go to the SPL course, right, and this is the SPL course, and I come inside. The very first thing I see is the orientation, right? Uh, which will be updated after the orientation comes to an end today. So the orientations you are currently looking at is the old orientations, which are still applicable. But I'll, I'll supersede these orientations with the one I'm currently doing, which is the September 22. So you, you look at the orientation area where you will shortly get the September 22 orientation with my presentation, right? Then you go down and you can see the syllabus areas coming in, right? I hope you can see the syllabus area A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H all coming here, right? You go one by one into the syllabus areas and go in the logical order. First do A, then do B, then do C, then do E, F, G, H. Go in the order of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Is that clear? No Kashif Kamra, no Hussain Kazi. Go in order A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? not in the order of the tutor, that I first complete one tutor, then I complete the other tutor. No. Go in the order A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Is that clear to all of you? So you open one syllabus area A, complete. Open B, complete. Open C, complete. Right? So you go in the order of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, not in the order of Kashif Kamran first and Hussain Ghazi after. Right? So that sets the order. Now, once you complete the entire syllabus area. Can you see the last area here on your screen? Just let me show you that. 
Uh, just give me one second. Can you see this last syllabus area? Exam drilling and practice session by Kashif Kamran. Can you see this all? Can all of you see this? Now in this area, you have 17 hours of practice lectures. That is what I was discussing shortly. These are not webinars, right? These are not webinars. These are 17 hours of practice lecture, 17 hours of practice lecture, which will give you an idea of how to write an answer. Professional marks, what are professional marks? How you implement professional marks when you're writing the answer, how to read an answer, how to plan an answer. So everything you want to know about a hundred marks paper, writing an answer, reading professional marks, technical marks, marking scheme, that is right here. But that has to come after you've completed the syllabus. Now, we will we'll come to the timelines by when you should complete the syllabus. We'll just come to that shortly. But you will first complete A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then you come to the exam drilling sessions. Now, when you are covering A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and the tutor has given you an assignment. Suppose you're watching a lecture, uh, uh, syllabus area A or B by Kashif Kamran. And within that lecture, Kashif Kamran has given you an uh, assignment. Now, what you have to do, you have to email that assignment to me at my email ID. I've given you my email ID at the start of the orientation, right? SBL Kashif Kamran at the red gmail.com. And I'll even put that in the WhatsApp group already. So you, every assignment is important and every assignment is to be emailed to the tutor, right? Irrespective of the practice sessions. So if there is an assignment, you have to do it to the best of your ability, to the best of your ability. You all know how to write an answer, right? Because this is not the first paper you're doing in, SP, uh, in the ACC qualification. Leave, leave aside the professional marks, right? When you're doing the assignments prior to the practice session, leave aside the professional marks. I hope you're getting my point here, everyone. So you normally know how to write an answer minus the professional marks. You can all write the answers, right? The way you write before in other papers, just write it. So if there is an assignment, you have to email me the assignment at my email ID when you're covering my syllabus areas. So is everyone clear when to watch the practice sessions and in which order to go with the syllabus? Is everyone clear with that? And is everyone clear where are the practice sessions? Where are the practice sessions? Right? So it, Mr. Hossein Kazi will be uploading his practice sessions on the portal. Currently, the practice sessions are by Kashif Kamran. You can see them here. And the word 17 hours, right? So Mr. Hussain Ghazi will be uploading the practice sessions if needed, because I think he has covered the practice within the content of the syllabus. But if he needs to upload some practice sessions, he will be uploading that right after the practice sessions by Kashif Kamra. So another section will come below, which will say practice sessions by Hussain Ghazi if needed, if needed, right? So for that, you need to correspond with Mr. Hussain Ghazi after the completion of the syllabus. Okay, now just... Let's go back to what we were discussing. Okay, so you've all watched the portal, right? That's how the portal looks like. And that's the order of things you have to go with on the portal, right? The next thing, which is extremely important is, I can show you that here. Uh, just give me one minute. I, I'll share the links of, I, I've shared the links of my webinars on the WhatsApp group, right? With every student when you join the course. The, the, in the opening message, the opening message you got when you joined the course, I've shared the webinar links with you, all of you. Can you please confirm that? Right, when you joined the course, I shared an intro message with you, right? And in that intro message, you have the webinars. Uh, that's the 24 hours, right? Uh, you come to my YouTube channel. I hope you can see my YouTube channel right here in front of your screen. And you can see the SPL webinars here. SPL webinars for June 22. I hope you can see the pictures. So I've just recently completed my June 22 webinar for SPL, which was over five days. And then you go down my channel, you will see the older one, this one. This is my December 21 webinar in front of your screen, uh, which was spread over four days. So five days for June 22 and four days for December 21. 
and I'll be coming with another webinar for all of you uh, in the mid of August, uh, which is for September 22. But before that, you have to watch the previous two webinars along with the 17 hours of practice sessions. Now that's what you need to do because these messages have been put to you in the WhatsApp group. Now, how would you devise a timetable? Today is the 17th of June. Uh, tentatively by the 17th of August, we'll have the webinars. So you have two months. What will you do inside these two months and how? Let, let me guide you about that. But just let me go back to my presentation here. Course on the portal, right? I've just guided you about the course on the portal. Uh, you will go in the order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Sorry, this last area is H mistakenly. The last area is H. Now, every syllabus area has how many lectures and how many hours? That, that, is, that is what you can see right here. Syllabus area A and B have eight lectures and total 17 hours. Syllabus area C has five lectures, nine hours. Uh, risk syllabus area D has three lectures and five and a half hours. And you go down this way. Now, you, when you are doing a syllabus area, you know how many lectures are there from this picture. And you know how many hours I need to spend on it. Is that clear to all of you? So the column is showing you the number of lectures. The last column is showing you the number of hours. Now, on the basis of this, how many total lectures are there on the portal? Minus the practice lectures, right? minus the practice lectures and minus the practice sessions. There are total 37 lectures for syllabus area A to H. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. From A to H, how many lectures are there? 37. And what is the total time of these 37 lectures? 54 lecture hours. Now, after these 54 lecture hours, you have seven practice lectures, which I've just shown you. So after you complete the syllabus area H and you completed the 100% syllabus, you will come down with seven practice lectures worth 17 hours. So what is the total worth now? 37 lectures plus the seven lectures, how much they will become? Their total become 44 lectures lectures right and how much is the total worth now 54 hours and 17 hours that's 71 hours 71 hours i hope you're getting it right all of you so 17 hours plus 54 hours and 37 lectures plus seven lectures so that's the order of the portal i hope you're clear with that now after you've completed the seven lectures on practice you will come with the webinars first nine and a half hours of the December 21 webinar. The link has been shared with you. And then you come with 14 hours of the June webinar. The link is here. So in the 71 hours, if you add another 14 hours of December, June webinar, and you add another 10 hours of the December webinar, so that's almost taking you to 95 hours. I hope you're getting the formula right. So first you watch the lectures from syllabus area A to H, which in total are 37 lectures worth 54 hours. After completing that, you watch the seven practice lectures worth 17 hours. After you've completed the practice lecture, then you watch the December 21 webinar, which is approximately 10 hours. Then you watch the June 22 webinar, which is approximately 14 hours. That all takes you to approximately 95 hours in total. Is that clear to all of you? How many total lectures are there if I accumulate the webinars? Uh, four lectures in one webinar and five lectures in one webinar. So that's total nine, nine lectures. So 44 plus nine is 53 lectures. 53 lectures in total, including the webinars and the practice sessions. Are you clear? And then after that, in August 22, there will be another webinar, 15 hours of webinar, which is for you, for September 22 students. I hope you're getting clear, clarity here, right? So let's, let's make a timetable quickly now. Can you see a Word file in front of your screen, which I will be sharing with you and uploading on the portal? Can you see the Word file? 
just to devise a strategy. Okay, just just let's devise a strategy. How would you complete the course and when? Now it will vary from a student to student, right? So no hard and fast rules, but this is how things should look like. Uh, a study time table for September 2022. Can all of you see this word file in front of your screen, please confirm. Okay, great. Okay, now the timetable is not an affirmative. It will vary from a student to student. I hope you agree. Uh, so I'm not enforcing a timetable. I'm just giving you a guidance, right? It's up to you. You want to stick to this timetable, but it is better that you make your own timetable. That is, that is more important, right? Now, in terms of the study timetable, how would you go about it? Uh, what is today? Uh, today is 17th June. So leave aside today. The, the day is almost wasted. At least uh, in Pakistan, it's almost coming to the end of the 17th June now. So to, today is the 17th of June, 2022, right? And when is your exams? Exams are on. Anyone knows the exam date? Let me confirm that. Uh, the exams are in September and the first on the September, it will be from 5th, 6th, on the 6th of September, right? On the 6th of September, you have your exams, right? So exams are on 6th of September, 2022. 6th of September. Twenty twenty two is your uh, exams, right? So now make a timetable. How would go, how would I go about it? Uh, today is the seventeenth of June, and my exams are on sixth. And I don't want my course to stretch up to sixth. I want to finish ten days before exams, for example, right? So how to go about it? Now, first of all, I should make I should set a deadline and then come back. What should be the deadline? Uh, I expect my tutor to deliver a webinar for September exams. And uh, as per my estimations, uh, the webinar will be held uh, not before uh, sixth is your paper, right? So I normally do the webinar in the last 10 to 12 days. So I, I expect the webinars coming by like 22nd, 23rd of August, right? So just, just keep a tentative date. Uh, September 2022 webinars, will be held around 22nd of uh, August. Just keep that date in mind tentatively. Okay, uh, so September 22 webinars will be held around 22nd of August, which is basically known as revision, revision series, right? So before the revision series, you should finish off things, right? So 22nd August, you have before 22nd of August, you have to complete everything. Now from the 17th of June up to the 21st of August is the time you have to complete things up, right? So how much time you have to complete course? How much time you have to complete course? That is from 17th June today up to 21st August. 2022 is the time you have. Now, again, you might say I even run my course after the webinars are over for uh, September. That's totally up to you. You can even study a day before exam. This is just my thought process that if I'm studying uh, the SPL course, this is how I would be studying it. So from today to the 21st of August, how should I go about it? Now, understand how many, how many things I need to cover. I have 30. Uh, I'm just missing. I, you know, I have 37 lectures on the portal. Plus, I have seven practice lectures. Then I have plus, I have four lectures for December 21 webinar. And I have five lectures for June 22 webinar. Right, that is what we decided. So first of all, I should know how much lectures I have to go with. So that's 37 and seven, that's like 44 and another nine, 44 and 10, 54, 53 lectures, right? 53 lectures in total, I have to go through. Now decide how much time you have. 
from 17th of august to the 20 uh, from 17th of june to the 21st of august how many days are there can you even count that quickly july and august so that's like two months two months is like 60 days and 60 days uh, 66 days okay just let's hold that answer true 53 lectures in total versus 66 days from now till 21st August, right? Is that doable? Is that less than a, is, is that less than one lecture a day even? Is that less than one lecture a day? Is that doable? Some of you might even study two lectures a day. Depends upon you. Now, 53 lectures versus 66 days in total. But if anyone is not keeping a deadline of 21st August, suppose you're keeping a deadline of uh, 1st September. Now you have 53 lectures in like 75 days. Are you getting my point? So I am setting a deadline of 21st August because that to me is a more realistic deadline to complete things up, right? And if you follow this, it's better. Now, you know that 53 versus 66 days, right? You have challenges. You have obstacles. You have barriers. You have issues. You have problems. And the list goes on. No one is without it, right? No one is without this. Some is doing jobs, some are not doing jobs. There might be some problems which you, which you cannot foresee from now onwards. There might be some issues which you cannot foresee from now onwards. And your schedule gets affected, right? So you need to understand that you have to keep a room for challenges. You have to keep a room for obstacles. Not every day you will study at optimum. Not every day you can study. Some days you might not even study. So try to evaluate yourself today, every one of you. Try to find your challenges, your obstacles, your barriers, your issues, your problems, which might distract you from studies, which might uh, create hindrances in your studies. And then set a timetable. You might keep a deadline 25th August, no issues. You might keep deadline 30th of August, no issues. You might keep a deadline 5th of September, no issues. But try to set a deadline, then only you will be able to complete the lectures. Because you have 37 lectures from syllabus area A to H. Then you have to do seven practice lectures on the portal. Then you have to do the four lectures of the December 21 webinar. And then you have to do five lectures of the June 22 webinar. You have to do them, right? Whether you do them quickly or being very lazy. You do two lectures a day, you do one lecture a day. It's totally up to you. Is everyone clear on this? Now, this, the, the last thing. Now, if you complete things by 21st of August, you know there is a webinar after that, which is for September. And you can enjoy that webinar more if you have completed the course. And that webinar will run for like five days. So tentatively, that webinar might finish by 27th or 28th of August. And after that, you will have just uh, 10 days. And 10 days is just for revision, right? Whatever you must have learned in the webinar from September exams, you will implement that. No, the, I, I didn't did the March 22 webinar, right? So I'm just, that's why I'm only recommending the two webinars, right? No, no March webinar, right? There, there is no March webinar. Right? Is everyone clear? So. Um, after, after the September 22 webinar, after the September 2, 22 webinar, you should only keep time to practice. You should only keep time to practice past papers, nothing else. Please, after the September 2, 22 webinar is ended, probably the September 22 webinar will end by 26, 27th of August. But after that, the 10 days you have, that is only practice. No reading of articles, no reading of books. 
that is not the time for knowledge that is the time for practice please 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 note that down so after i complete my september 22 webinar the time left might be 10 days might be 9 days might be 8 days what are you doing inside those 10 9 8 days all of you practice no knowledge so whatever knowledge you have to take take it now because after the september 22 webinars you will hardly have nine to 10 days. And in those nine to 10 days, whatever you must have learned out of the September 22 webinar, you have to reinforce that. You have to implement that and you have to do practice. So after the 22 webinar, September, you should only keep time to practice past papers, nothing else, plus reinforce whatever has been guided by the tutor in the webinar. Is that clear? So already, already something like 95 lecture hours and there will be a 15 hours of the September webinar that is taking you to 110 hours, right? So it's almost like 100 plus hour course where you have to invest in it and you have to make a proper timetable for that. But please ensure you make a proper timetable of 53 lectures. Now, listen very carefully. When you watch a lecture, is that so easy? Suppose you are watching a lecture of two hours. You play a lecture for two hours. Now, every lecture has a support file. Now, let, let me guide you about that very, very carefully. Uh, just let me take you back to the portal because I just need to display, uh, need to demonstrate that very carefully for all of you. Uh, just let me go back to the portal. Can you all see the portal? The SPL portal on your screen, please confirm that. Okay, thank you. You go down. Suppose you come to the syllabus area A and B. Uh, I'm opening the syllabus area A and B. See, I open the syllabus area A and B. Right. Now you will see the video icon. Lecture number one, you can see a video icon, right? Video icon. So that's the lecture. Lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, lecture five, lecture six, lecture seven, lecture eight, lecture eight, part one, lecture eight, part two. You can see the video icon. So that's the video lecture, right? Now, after the video lectures, can you see uh, the PDF documents coming here? Can you all see the PDF documents coming here? So you have the syllabus area A and B presentation. So before you start the syllabus area A and B, the very first thing you have to do is you download the presentation for syllabus area A and B and you keep a printout on your table. So keep a printout of the presentation for syllabus area A and B with you. So they become notes. So on the table, you have the presentation for syllabus area A and B even before you start watching lectures of the syllabus area A and B. Then before you start to watch the lecture one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the syllabus area A and B, look at the support files. Can you see lecture five support file, lecture six support file, lecture three support file, lecture four support file, lecture one support file, lecture two support file, seven and eight. Every lecture has a support file, one to eight. That is what I write on the screen when I'm delivering a lecture, just like I was writing on the word file. So whatever I write on the screen is uh, put in a PDF. So eight lectures having eight support files and one presentation, which is a presentation for A and B. So you first need to take a printout. Presentation followed by support files. Every lecture will have a support file. So there are eight lectures. So there are eight support files and that's on the table. Make a file, make a file, put it in the file, punch and put it in the file. Say, this is my file for SPL. Now, listen to the first lecture, play the first lecture, right? Lecture number one, play the first lecture. Now, whatever I will be writing on the word file is already there with you on a printout, right? True, false. Whatever I'm writing on the screen, will that be with you in, in, a, in a printed form? Lecture number one support file, will that be with you, all of you? And you're listening, you're listening. And whatever I'm writing is with you. 
But if you want to write something extra, can you scribble? Can you scribble on the printout? Can you scribble on the printout? Can you write something extra on the printout? Yes. But after you complete the first lecture, the support file of the lecture, will that become your notes? The support file of the lecture, will that become your notes? Right? With all the scribbling you have done. In the same way, you, you listen to the lecture two, you listen to the lecture three, you listen to the lecture four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. <coughs> but please ensure you keep the support file and the presentation before watching a lecture. Is that clear to all of you? So syllabus area A and B, download the support files, download the presentation, take a printout, and then sit down and start watching the lecture. And if you want to write anything extra, write it down. Now, within every lecture, I might have given you an assignment. So you have to email the assignment to me, which will take an extra time. Within every lecture, I might have guided about reading an article. So you have to spend an extra time reading the article. So 37 lectures, accumulatively 54 lecture hours, it doesn't mean that you are spending 54 hours. You are spending more than 54 hours because you have to do the assignments. You have to uh, read the article. So I hope you're getting the time you have to invest on the course. 54 hours doesn't mean 54 hours because you need to find time for reading the articles. You need to find time for doing the assignments. So 54 hours might look like 100 hours. Is everyone clear with how to go about the syllabus and course? So will you, will you take a printout of the files first before watching the lectures, all of you? Are you getting that track? Right, so that's, that's extremely important. So presentation and notes have to be taken out. Okay, let's go back to my Word file where I was discussing things with you. So uh, please ensure you set a timetable, number one, and then you start watching the lectures and I've just guided you how you should watch a lecture. You should take a printout first, then start watching the lecture. So if you want to note anything during the conduct of the lecture, you do it. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, this is the SBL course structure. Go in order of the portal. That is what I've guided you, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And after completing the H, you should watch the practice lecture. So go in order of the portal. Complete the course by 16th of August. I've just changed the deadline. Complete the course by 21st of August, right? So that's the change of the deadline. So you can benefit from the revision course. Read all articles recommended during the course. I'm just coming to the articles because that is very, very important. But when you are watching my course, I will be recommending you read this article, read this article, read this article. And I will be reinforcing that during the conduct of my lecture. So you have to read the article recommended by the tutor. And I'll, I'll just tell you the benefit of that. Prepare your own notes while going with the lecture. Have I guided you about that? Take a printout of my support file and start watching the lecture and scribble, scribble on the printouts. So it becomes your notes. So prepare your own short notes while going with the lectures and reading articles. Revision course recording will be available so you can watch later till the day of exam. That is the revision course for September, right? So September revision course recording will be available because a lot of times the students ask, what if we miss the live revision course? The recording will be available. And you have to submit me the assignments uh, which has been given to you in my respective syllabus areas at my email ID, spl.kashifkamran at the rate gmail.com. And you can send me as many assignments as possible. Even uh, if you do something extra, and you want me to check that, you can even email me extra things beside assignments. I'm more than welcome to check them out for you. So this is how things will be for you in this course. Now, few last things. SPL resources. Uh, Majid, I'm just coming to that. Please give me five minutes. Resources for your exams, September 22. The very first question, should we read books? Every student asks me, should we read books? For SPL. And my answer to that is, 
No. But if you like reading books, you have never passed an SPL paper without reading books, then do read it. Which book will you read? BPP. But broadly, the answer is no. But if any student believes, oh, I cannot pass in paper without reading the books, I've never passed a paper without reading the books, then do read it. But then you ask me another question, which, you should, which book should I read? SPL for SPL, BPP. But the blunt answer, should we read books? No. Then what's the substitute of the books? What should I do beside books? From where will I get the knowledge? I, I'm, just giving you an, uh, I'm just giving you an overview. From where will you get the knowledge and a better knowledge than books? Should we read the books? No. Then what's the substitute of books? Just give me five minutes and you will be amazed with the substitutes. How important are technical articles? Very, very important. Must, must. In September, December 21 paper, which is the most latest paper available on the practice platform. And I hope you're all familiar with the practice platform, right? There was a 12 marks question on customer segmentation. And that directly came from the examiner article. That is the importance of reading articles. Regret, students regret later what if we would have read the article? Why would you like to regret when the articles are available before the exams? So many times in the SPL paper, something has directly come from the examiner article and students don't read them. They like books. They like Kaplan. They like BPP. Kaplan and BPP is not the perspective of the examiner. Kaplan BPP is not the perspective of the examining team. The perspective of the examining team is the articles. What is, what is going in the mind of the examiner is the article. What is going in the mind of the examining team is the article, not the BPP and Kaplan book. I don't know why you give preference to books over articles when you have so many articles on SBL. And they're divided into syllabus areas, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. It's so easy. You know which article relates with which syllabus area. Just, just let me show you and guide you on something extremely important. Look at this website for articles. Can you see this in front of your screen, all of you? Technical articles. The website for SPL articles. Can you all see that in front of your screen? Right, you write on the Google SPL technical articles and you reach here. Look at this. Have they divided the articles into syllabus area? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Hyperlink. You click on A, you click on B, you click on C, you click on D and you reach the desired articles. So easy. You know which articles are for A, which articles are for B, which articles for C, D, E, F, G, H. Once you cover the articles with the lectures, you are assured you have the right knowledge for the September 22 exams. Articles and the lectures together. Best knowledge. No books. There are plenty of articles. And please remember my words. So many times in the past paper, things have directly come out of articles in the case studies, in the questions, in the requirements. And you will regret that later. Please, please, please do that. It's extremely important, reading the articles. And I've reinforced that in my webinars, in my practice sessions, in my lectures on syllabus area A, B, C, D, and F. Every lecture I do, I reinforce the importance of reading articles. Please, please, please do read articles. No skipping of articles. No skipping of articles. And reading means just a quick read. Uh, if you don't understand something, you can send me a screenshot and I'll explain you in the easier version. Okay, back to this. How important are technical articles? Next, should I do the revision kit? No. Past papers. SPL, was, SPL started in September 2018. And the questions in the revision kit are not worthy of exam standard. 
you have to do the past papers directly. There are plenty of them on the platform. And when, when did the SPL started? SPL started when? SPL started in September 2018, right? So from September 2018, you have to do the past papers. And there are so many past papers available on the portal, right? Let me just show you that. I hope you're familiar with the uh, platform, the practice platform, all of you. Uh, the SPL practice platform. Can you see the, uh, the plat platform on the screen, the practice platform? I hope you're familiar with this, all of you. Can you see it on the screen? Please confirm. Can you all see the practice platform on the screen? And I hope you're all familiar with this. Go down and you go to the SPL paper. See the SPL paper. In the SPL paper, we have the ACC official resources, past exam library. In the past exam library, we have three questions from September, December 20 exams. We have March, June 21 exam, and we have the September, December 21 exams. So three latest papers are there in the past exam library. You can see the September, December 21 paper. You can see the March, June 21 paper, and you can see the December 20 paper. So three latest papers are available on the past exam library. Then you go to the practice exams. In the practice exams, you have practice, practice exam one, practice exam two, practice exam three. And you even have a June 22 mock exam, right? You will also be getting a September 22 mock exam by ACCA. So if you want to do the June 22 mock, you can also do that, but you will be getting a September 22 mock as well. So how many practice exams are there? Three practice exams. How many uh, exam libraries are there? Three, six. And how many specimen exams are there? Three specimen exams. So how much, how much are the practice? Nine. Three specimen exams, three practice exams, and three past exam libraries. So total of nine, which you can do directly on the practice platform. Nine question papers right here. And then there are so many question papers which are not on the portal. I hope you can do them on the blank workspace right here. You know the blank workspace given by ACCA. So any past paper not available on the platform, you can do it on the blank workspace. And on the Google Drive, which I've shared with you, I've given all the past papers to you, right? So you have to do the past papers from September 18 onwards on the portal, right? Preferably. So no revision kits, right? Only the past papers. Should we be reading the examiner reports? Yes, I've, done, I, I've put three examiner reports on the Google Drive, but again, the examiner reports will be read after you have completed the course. So after you have done the practice lectures and you have done the webinars, so you will be in a position to read the examiner reports. It's too early you start reading examiner reports, but you have to read the examiner reports. How many of them? Three of them. And I've given the three examiner reports in the Google Drive. I'll just show you that, but you have to read the three examiner reports. After you watch my uh, June 22 webinar, that's towards the end of your course, you will really get amazed how important the examiner reports are. And I think that June 22 webinar will give you an idea how critical is it to read the examiner reports. So uh, no reading of examiner report at this time when you're starting the syllabus, but you have to read the examiner reports at the end of your syllabus. Uh, that's somewhere in the month of August when you are completing up the syllabus, but three of them, right? And those three have been put in the Google Drive, which I will be sharing with you. How many past papers should we be doing? I've given you the answer, September 18 onwards. So all past papers, right? Including the practice exams and including the specimen exams. So you have a very good library of SPL past papers given by ACCA. No need to spend time on revision kit at all. So how many past papers? September 18 onwards, including the specimen exams available on the computer-based practice platform. Which resources are important for SPL exams? All key resources are at one place, which is the Google Drive, which I've already shared with you uh, when you joined the classes. I hope you got that welcome message. And in the welcome message, there was a Google Drive link. But I just want to show you something on the Google Drive before I end my orientation. 
Uh, I hope you can see the Google Drive in front of your screen, all of you. This is a Google Drive, right? Now, there are folders in Google Drive, which will guide you. Uh, there is a folder, 10 things to learn from SPL September 18 exams. That's an amazing article. Uh, with, when the first exam sitting was over in September 18, uh, the ACCA examining team wrote an article that what were the key issues in the September 18 exams which the student has to face. And this is a wonderful article if you all can read it. 10 things to learn. Then articles to read. Uh, I have put all the articles to read in this folder here. You can go inside and read the articles, but you can also read the articles from the website directly, uh, particularly the articles for Mr. Hossein Kasi syllabus area, EGNH. But I put my articles in Google Drive. So if you want to read them directly from here, you can. But still, I would prefer that you can read the articles from the website. Then this is the most important thing. I, I'm just coming back to Dr. Dinu 100 series, but there are examiner reports. I've put three examiner reports inside, which you will be reading somewhere after completing the course in August, three examiner reports. I have included uh, a folder, Importance of Effective Communication, which is the formats. The formats you need to write the answer in, letters, memos, briefing notes. So this is the SPL uh, examining team article format. They've given you all the formats to write the answer in, right? So you can benefit from the formats here, right? Then. Past papers, I put all the past papers here, including the specimen exams. So if you want to go with the PDF versions, uh, that's right here. Uh, I've put the tutor notes, the tutor notes over here, the syllabus area A and B, C, D and F. Even the tutor notes are available on the portal, but they're also available here on the drive. And the orientation tutor notes, which will be updated after I complete my orientation today. And then uh, webinars to success. Uh, I've just recommended December 21 webinar and all the support files of December 21 webinars are in the December 21 folder and all the support files of the June 22 webinar is in the June 22 folder. So this is one resource for all of you. So you just come to the Google Drive if you want to search something. Uh, if I recommend anything in the lecture, where will you find it? If I recommend something in the lecture, where, where, where will you find it? in the Google Drive, right? So come directly to the Google Drive and you will find everything in the Google Drive. Now, the last thing, Dr. Dinu 100 series. Can you all see this? The folder number three, Dr. Dinu 100 series. Right? <clears throat> Please ensure I'm writing something very important. Listen to that. And I'm, I'm ending the orientation. Can you all see the Dr. Dinu 100 series? Okay. You open this up. Can you see a PDF file here? Dr. Dinu 100 series PDF file. Right. This is like 225 pages. What exactly is Dr. Dinu 100 series? Um, when SPL was launched in 2018, September, there was a need to support SPL. And ACCA uh, hired an expert tutor. And that tutor, Dr. Dinu, he conducted a very grand webinar for SPL in, in I think somewhere like August 2018, ahead of the September exams. And he published a document known as 100 series, where he has guided about 100 things you should know about SPL. And that's an amazing summary of the whole syllabus. It's a 225 pages document. And in the, in the June 22 webinar, day one, I have guided students which pages to download, which pages to take print out of, of the 225 pages. So you need to watch the June 22 webinar for guidance about which pages to take print out of. But this document is must. Now, this is how you should be going finally before I end my webinar, my, sorry, my orientation. Listen to this. Knowledge. How would you take knowledge, knowledge in SPL without book, without book? Now, if you want to take knowledge in SPL without books, the number one source is listen to lecture plus prepare, listen to lecture, lectures. Listen to 
plus the support files printout, the printout of the support files, that will be your first source of knowledge. Second, after listening to lectures and the support files you take, a, take as a printout, the second source of knowledge is articles, technical articles. And the third source of knowledge is the Dr. Dinu 100 series. Pages to take print out of watch the day one watch the day one of June 22 webinar on my YouTube channel. Watch the day one only, right? On the day one, I have guided about the pages to take print out of from the webinar. Right now, that's extremely important. Now, knowledge comes from where? Knowledge comes from the lectures and the support files. Knowledge comes from the articles and knowledge comes from the Dr. Dinu 100 series. So if you're not reading a book, this is the formula. And this is the best formula because I don't like books. Uh, with, the, with the type of paper SBL is, there is no relevance of a book reading because there is so much of substitutes available from where you can support your knowledge. So Dr. Dinu 100 series is a wonderful PDF document, 225 pages, but you're not taking a printout of all the 225 pages. If you want to, you can, but I think the selected pages are like 100, 125 selected pages, which you can take print out of because that gives you a holistic revision of things you have in SPL. So uh, Dr. Dinu has guided us about 100 things you should know about SPL. And those 100 things are amazing. If you can download those and take a print out of them, you will, you will have so good command and so good control on the SBL paper. So that's from where you can take the knowledge in the SBL context. And I've just made a study planner for you. I hope you, you will implement that study planner once you start to sit down and study SBL. So all resources are at one place, right? Is that clear to all of you? I hope you got some benefit out of this orientation uh, where I tried addressing some of the key concerns the student have about SPL. But again, this is just the start of the journey. So much lectures you have to watch, right? So much lectures you have to watch, then the practice lectures, then the webinars, and then you will be at a position to say, I know SPL. And then you will be in a position to say, I, I, can, I can solve the past papers. And you have the September 22 webinar coming in, lots of reading articles, my lecture notes, and then you have to read the Dr. Dinu series. So I think you need to sit down today uh, with a proper mindset, making up a proper timetable, and then launching your studies from tomorrow uh, for SPL. And if you have any queries, any problems, any issues, you can drop me a message and I will be responding to that within 24 hours or if I'm busy, within 48 hours, but I normally prefer responding in 24 hours. There can be some unforeseen circumstances when the time span of responding to messages gets a bit dragged down, but normally my response rate is 24 hours of the drop of the message. Okay, if you have any queries or after you watch the orientation, you believe something is missing and you want to ask something, uh, you can put your questions on the WhatsApp group. I really appreciate your time you took out today for joining the life orientation session. And I am just ending it uh, saying thank you to all of you. And I wish you all uh, the very best of luck for your exams coming up in September. Please make a timetable and start to study. Uh, the presentation for the orientation and the word file I've used will be uploaded on the portal. <coughs> yes, I'll, I'll open the WhatsApp group. Don't worry. Thank you, all of you. Have a nice day. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz. This is your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off from the SPL orientation for September 22 exams. <laughs>